Today, I'll be sharing my workflow on how I created this particular animation, which was created for the brief that was given to me as a looping animation that could be used as a background to a video talking about spiraling into a rabbit hole. The original topic is a bit dark, so this is how I created this particular animation. In my default scene, I went ahead and pressed X to delete my default cube, and then I'll press Shift A and search for a mesh circle. Now, this is going to decide how many vertices you want. You could do this with a square, as you saw in the beginning, or you could do it with a pentagon by changing this to four or five. Of course, if you want, you could use any number such as a triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, or so on. But I'll work with a pentagon. Now, I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees, and then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode, or you can use this drop down over here. Then I'll press two to go into my edge select mode, or press this button up here, after which I'll press E Y 20, which will extrude all of these edges on the y-axis by 20 units. The next thing is, I want to actually subdivide this a little bit so that they're a little bit more evenly spaced out before I add in some more subdivisions. So I'll press seven to go to the top view and then I'll press control R to add in loop cuts and I'll just increase the number of cuts by using my scroll wheel until I feel like they're going to be approximately square. So I think this number is fine. So I'll go ahead and confirm it by double clicking. Now I'm going to go ahead and press A to select everything and press control E and choose subdivide. Then I'll expand this panel over here and just increase the number of cuts from one to something like 10 or maybe even 20. So now that I have a fairly well subdivided cube, I can go ahead and add in the next modifier, which is going to be a simple deform modifier. Now I want it to twist, but I want it to twist about the Z axis. And it seems like it's the Y axis, but remember we did rotate this about the X axis initially. So it's local Z axis is currently on the global Y axis. And that's why we have to choose Z. Of course, you can always just try around the different axes until you get one that works. Next, because a pentagon has five sides, I'm going to change the angle by 360 divided by five. Now, if you were using a square, you'd do 360 by 4. If you were using a triangle, you do 360 by 3 and so on and so forth. However, this will ensure that when we duplicate this, they will perfectly line up and you'll get a seamless loop. The next step was to add in some lines that go along these faces. So to get that, I went ahead and pressed Shift D to duplicate the entire tunnel, after which I hit the original tunnel by just hiding it in the outliner over here. And then I pressed tab to go into edit mode. Then I'll press one to go into my front view, after which I want to select a few of these vertices and delete them, except for the ones in the center. So I'll go to my vertex select mode and just count the number of vertices on each line. So let's see, each line has one, two, three, four, five, 18, 19, 20 vertices. So that means I would have to select nine from this side and delete them and nine from this side and delete them. So let's double tap A. And to make sure that you're not selecting just the front edge over here and you're selecting all of them, what you have to do is just switch on this button to toggle x-ray. And then when you actually select any vertex like this, you actually select the entire line. So that's going to be really useful. So let's go back to our front view and then press C for circle select and just select nine from this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then nine from the other side and do the same for all five of the sides. So we'll just press C and just select nine on each of these sides. And remember, I am not currently selecting these edges, but you might as well select them because we, we are going to be deleting them at the end. So that way we make sure that the middle two vertices remain on each of these sides. And we're going to use those later on. After that, we'll press X and delete vertices. So now we're left with just these two lines that rotate about the center of the faces of the original tunnel that we had. So we can unhide them by pressing these buttons and now move on to the next step, which is actually giving these some thickness. So we'll go ahead and add in another modifier and this time choose the solidify modifier and we'll go ahead and start increasing the thickness. Now, if you see that they're going outside the pentagon, change the offset from minus one to positive one, and now they're going to start moving inward. So I'm fairly happy with this. So I'll leave it as is, but I don't want them to be touching this outer circle. So I'm just going to press S shift Y so that it doesn't scale on the Y axis and just bring it down by a little bit so that it's not touching the edges. And there's actually a little gap between the wall and the line. Then I'll switch off X-ray mode again, and then I'll set up the scene. So first, all of the defaults is going to be going to my render properties, switching on ambient occlusion and changing the distance from 0 0.2 to something like two and increasing the factor all the way to five. Then I'll switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Then I'll go to my output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second 
second end frame I'm going to keep as 150 and my output folder is going to be wherever I want it to be. My file format is going to be FFmpeg video encoding I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptually Lossless. Then I'm going to switch my viewport shading to rendered so that I can see the changes that I make and I'm going to select the default light and press X to delete it. Then I'm going to go to my world properties and just increase the background all the way to a bright white after which I'll select my camera from the outliner and press Alt G to clear location Alt R to clear rotation and then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now I'll press 0 to go into my camera view and create the actual animation. So I'll expand my timeline a little bit. Press the back arrow to go to frame 0 and then tap I location rotation and scale but ideally just location would have done as well. Then I'll go to frame 150 press G Y and if I move it in the positive direction it goes towards the end of the tunnel and remember the tunnel was 20 units long so I'm going to have to type 20 and then tap I location rotation scale. Then I'll come down here and press T linear so that it becomes a seamless loop when I actually create the duplicates. So to create the duplicates and make it seamless I'm just going to select both these wires and the outer tunnel and press Alt D to create a linked duplicate or an instance and then I'll press Y 20 so that it moves on the Y axis by 20 units. Remember we're using 20 units because we originally extruded the mesh by 20 units. Now to repeat this entire action I'll just press Shift R and it'll repeat it as many times as I press Shift R. So I'll just repeat it by three or four times so that when I actually look through the camera view the absolute end will not be seen especially after you add in volumetrics to the scene. So to add in volumetrics to make it non-looping under this world properties itself I'll go to volume and just change this from none to volume scatter and then I'll increase this white all the way to the brightest white and I'll change the density down to 0.1. Then for the actual color of my background I'm going to give it a slightly bluish tint so maybe I'll go with a hue of 0.59 and a saturation of 0.5. Then lastly to actually get nice reflections I'll select my outer circle material go to the material properties give it the default material and then go down to the metallic value and just increase that all the way to one and with that we're pretty much done with the scene setup the next part is actually getting it to look and match the vibe for that I'll just select my camera go to the viewport display and change passport out all the way to one so that nothing outside the camera can be seen and it won't be distracting then I'll go to my render properties go all the way down to color management and change this from filmic to standard and since it's a very dark topic I'm actually going to reduce the gamma down to something like 0.5 after that I'm going to use some amount of compositing as well so I'll bring my cursor to the junction of these two windows click and drag to create a new window and then I'll change this to the compositor. Now the cool thing that I haven't actually used till now but I'm starting to use on a regular basis is the real-time compositor and to enable that all you have to do is come down over here expand it and choose camera for the compositor. Now you don't actually have to render out an image as you would have to before and you directly see it in the viewport. So let's go ahead and add in the nodes which is essentially brightening this up a bit and adding in some contrast to fix it. So I'll press shift a and search for a brightness contrast node plug that in and I'm actually going to increase the brightness to 30 and I'm going to change the contrast to something like 70 and that just brightens this up and I really like the look of this and considering the topic is spiraling into a rabbit hole and as such a never-ending rabbit hole I think this is a perfect animation for that situation so with that all I have to do is press render animation. Another thing that I just wanted to share considering that I feel these areas are a bit too bright and a bit more contrast could be helpful. You could always switch on overlays again and press tab to go into edit mode for these individual rings and then change the pivot point to individual origins and change this from global to local. Then you can press RZ and just rotate all of them about their individual axes till you get an angle that you feel suits better for this particular animation. Hopefully this was a really simple one but a few of the techniques here and there would be fairly useful. Of course there are many other ways that you could have created this particular animation but I just found this to be the first thing that came to my mind so I thought I'd share it with all of you. Apart from that if you have any questions comments queries let me know down below and I'll answer to as many of them for as long as I can. Remember I post videos every single day so there's a lot of content on this channel that's waiting to be discovered. So until the next video comes out tomorrow thank you so much for watching keep creating and stay creative.